Hey everyone, welcome to another Gearblocks update. This time I'll be talking about the new spring dampers in the game. The spring dampers are made out of two parts that have to be fitted together, and they come in two sizes, a smaller and a larger unit. The spring dampers are attached to the rest of your construction using axles. And the axles can be attached either using a hinge or a rigid attachment. The two parts of the spring damper can be attached in different orientations like that, so you can have the axles at 90 degrees if you want. Once the spring damper is unfrozen, you can see it'll extend as the spring pushes it, the two parts apart like that. The two parts of the spring damper are actually attached at the midpoint along their range of motion, so in this case it can move one unit in that way and one unit out that way. There's a larger spring damper that has a greater range of movement. So in this case it can move two units in and two units out. Okay, so let's have a look at these parts on uh, a couple of examples. So first off is a simple test bed with a swing arm and a weight that we're going to use to compress the spring. So let's attach that like that. So once that's unfrozen, you can see the spring is now pushing uh, the arm up and it's under compression from the weight pulling it down. Now by hovering over the spring damper and uh, holding shift and uh, E, we can bring up the part behavior dialog and adjust the spring rate and damping. So if I bring the spring rate down, you can see that the arm sinks down because there's less force in the spring pushing it up. And I can uh, increase it as well to make it more stiffly sprung as well. I can adjust the damping, so if I bring that all the way down, you can see it becomes very, very bouncy. And I can uh, push it all the way up. You can see the mo movement's now very stiff. And actually, when it's released, it, it takes a little time to be pushed up by the spring because the damping is kind of holding it back. The larger spring damper not only has a greater range of movement, but it also has higher spring and damping rates, so it starts at a higher default and can go up um, to twice the values that the smaller one can. And one last thing to mention is that the uh, spring rate can be reduced all the way down to zero, and then the spring damper becomes just purely a damper. So you can see there's no spring force anymore, but it just lets the weight down gently. Okay, so let's have a look at this on a simple vehicle. So here we have uh, um, a couple of uprights that move up and down that are attached to the chassis with uh, these swing arms that, that let the uh, suspension move up and down and the uh, spring damper is attached rigidly to, to the rest of the upright to stop things flopping around. I've just implemented steering using a couple of servos like this just to keep things simple otherwise you'd have a bunch of linkages and stuff as well. Um, and I just want to keep things simple for this, this example. At the rear we just have a, a solid um, swing arm, um, pretty much as simple as you can get really. Uh, but you can see it works pretty well and you can see the, the vehicle um, riding on the suspension and kind of compressing it down like that. Now when you're adjusting the suspension for your vehicle, you typically want to have uh, the, the the suspension give you a kind of one down-up motion, is, is kind of what you're after, rather than it bouncing around all over the place. And you also typically want to have the spring rate and damping at roughly the same value. It seems to give uh, pretty good behavior. But, you know, you can play around with it uh, as you want. As I say, this is a very simple uh, um, suspension geometry. You can build all sorts of kind of different kinds of suspension. Um, um, yeah, and I can't see, wait to see what you guys build with these new parts. Um, but yeah, that's it for this time. Uh, thanks for watching.